Loretta Young Show, starring Loretta Young. One of the girls who helps me get ready for these visits with you was just telling me that she has a sister who has 13 children. And it seems that someone asked her sister which one of her children she loved the most. This was her reply. The one who's sick until he gets well, or the one who's away until he gets home. You know, our story tonight is about a mother, too, but a very different kind of mother. Now, what did I mean by a different kind of mother? Well, let me show you. Let's pick her up at a PTA meeting which is being held at the school of her son. No, that's not the lady. No, not that one either. Here she is. Her name is Marcy Thorne. She looks like she's listening, and she acts like she's enjoying it. But, oh boy, her thoughts. Why do these things have to be so dull? It is well to be concerned about the administrative policies and the curriculum. Don't be overly critical without just cause. But express yourself frankly when you find reasonable cause. For women. Reason. Oh, it's not that I don't like women. Something quite dreadful happens when more than three of us get together without men. And if you'll just look into the library before you leave this afternoon, you'll find many books. Oh, my dear, how shocked they'd be if they knew where I was going from here. The cocktails with an attractive man, an attractive bachelor whom I met only last night at a cocktail party. You mean you're a real live native? Born right here in New York. My parents, two and three of my grandparents. Manhattan Island? Right in the middle of it. I can't believe it. I was born here, too. I know. <laughs> and I bet the background to your novel is New York City, right? How would you know I'd written a novel? It isn't even published yet. It's still in manuscript form. Yes, I know. But how? Oh, I have my ways. And I'll bet it could be a bestseller if it's with the right publisher. You're amazing. You like champagne? Mm-hmm. And uh, white violets? <laughs> What woman doesn't? Shall we go? Where? Anywhere, out of here. Oh. A miracle like this deserves further exploration. <laughs> Let's go someplace and have dinner and talk about my impending bestseller. No, oh, well, I couldn't do that because, you see, I'm here with my husband. Oh, we'll ask him to have dinner with us. Oh. Only we won't let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> another time, I'd love it. Well, tomorrow's another time. Well, uh... Tomorrow? Not for dinner. Cocktails, then? Yes, that'd be all right. Where? Well, I like the gold room at the Park Hotel. That makes it unanimous. Marcy. Sure. Yes, dear. Are you ready to go? Robbie will be waiting. Yes, dear, I'm ready. You know Mr. Delaney, don't you, Justin? I should. How do you do? Sure. Fine, thank you. Well, goodbye, Mr. Delaney. Nice to see you. Uh, the gold room, then, at five? Uh, yes, five o'clock would be fine. Uh, would you mind? Oh. Thank you very much, and good night. Good night. Thank you, dear. An attractive young man. Yes, isn't he? Another fan, darling? Oh, are you jealous? No, I'm flattered. <laughs> they sort of confirm my taste and my good luck. Oh, you're sweet, Justin. But out of all of these, you've chosen me. You ready? Yes. She's up to now. She's not dressed like that just for a PTA meeting. And there's flowers. One of her admirers, I suppose. Some women collect milk glass, first editions. But Marcy collects attention. Young, old, men, women, children. Anyone old enough to pay court to the queen. If this meeting isn't over soon, I'll never correct my test papers. And then, of course, there are the scholarships and the student loans. It's funny what happened to Lydia. When we were in college together, she was the girl with all the bows. And now, an old maid school teacher. I'll be terribly late. I hope you won't mind too much. 
Why did I come to this tiresome meeting anyway? Oh, because Robbie asked me to. He was so anxious for me to be here. My Robbie, the dearest little boy in the world. I could never let him down, never, ever. Of course, we all realize that much of a person's adult behavior grows out of childhood experiences. A good relationship now, who's that? Oh, yes, Mrs. Mason, Albert's mother. Nice little fella, Albert. She seems very nice, too. But why does she let herself go like that? All shelf and a yard wide. Don't these women know that children like their mothers to be attractive so they can be proud of them? Poor creatures. No wonder Robbie's such a good-looking boy. Takes after his mother. She's certainly beautiful. I hope I'll get home in time to make that meatloaf for dinner. Albert gets hungry so early. Let's see. Meatloaf, asparagus, lemon pie. Mm. And so, it means that all of us working together with mutual trust and cooperation, can build a better future for the children we love. Thank you. Well, Marcy, oh. fancy meeting you here. Yes, fancy. Well, I promised, Robbie, and now I am late for an appointment. Oh. Well, I thought you wouldn't be wasting all this splendor for a PTA meeting. Well, <laughs> nothing's too good for the PTA. But I am meeting someone downtown. When you are meeting someone, it's usually somebody important. Well, as a matter of fact, it's uh, Lawrence Delaney, the columnist on the Post. Yes, he has a novel, and he said I could take a look at it. Uh, Justin might publish it. Oh, of course. Oh, you lead a very interesting life, Marcy. <laughs> and you must be a great help to Justin. Oh, Lydia. Justin knows that he and Robbie are the only two people who are important to my life at all. The rest is just... Amusement. Amusing to Justin or to you? Well, to Justin, too. Because he has no doubts about how I feel about him. You see, the trouble with my husband is he understands me. Hmm? Marcy? Yes? Yeah. You know the trouble with you is you're greedy. Oh, Lydia. You are the one person in the world who has more than anyone ought to have the right to expect. But you try to have everything. And you know, Marcy... People who try to have everything sometimes wind up with nothing at all. No, oh, darling, don't be dramatic, huh? Well, I have to go. Bye. Mom? Oh, well, Robbie. Darling, what are you doing at school so late? Waiting for you. I knew you were coming to the meeting, and so I decided to wait and walk home with you. Why, do you mean you've been here since 3.30? That's right, Mom. Oh, darling. That was very sweet of you. And I'd love to walk home with you, but I'm not going home. Oh, Mom. Oh, I'm sorry. I wish I'd known it had been such fun. But I had an appointment downtown. Oh, gee whiz, Mom. Do you absolutely have to go downtown? Yes, dear. I'm sorry. I do. Oh, can't you do it tomorrow? Well, no, honey. I'm sorry. It's too late to change things now. Mm. Well, I'll go with you then. Oh, no, no. You couldn't do that. It wouldn't be any fun for you. It's... Well, darling, it's sort of business. You see, I'm meeting someone, and I have a chance to pick up a manuscript and read it for Daddy before any other publisher sees it. And you know how important that is, hmm? Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> well, I guess I'll go home now. Yes, darling, you do that. And I'll get back just as fast as I can. Taxi! Robbie, how'd you like a quarter for some ice cream or something, hmm? No, thanks. I don't feel hungry. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's have a date on Saturday, just you and I. We'll go to lunch and to a movie. Would you like that? Sure. That'd be keen. Good. Honey, did something happen at school today that you wanted to tell me about? I mean, any special reason you waited to see me? No, Mom. I just want to walk home to you. That's all. Oh. Well, so long. So long, honey. Uh, Robbie, careful crossing the street. I will. Park Hotel, please. Yes, ma'am. Robbie's very sweet. If only this mix-up hadn't happened. Well, relax now, Marcy. Time to relax. 
bothering me. It's like a little fleck of dust in my eye. Not painful, but troublesome. If I didn't know better, I'd say my conscience was bothering me. Robbie? What about Robbie? <laughs> Robbie's fine. Everything's fine. I'm going to have a cocktail with a friend. Charming of him to send white violets. Orchids are expensive but dull, and gardenias are obvious and they spoil quickly. But white violets are unusual and delicate, not easy to find. The table, madame? Oh, no, no, thank you, not yet. If there's one thing I hate, it's being kept waiting by a man. Especially in a public place, there's something so, so exposed about it. Still, I am nearly a half hour late. He's probably inside having a drink. Now, look. Perhaps Madame would like me to page her companion? Oh, no. No, thank you. No. I just can't go in. It's like running the gauntlet, all those people staring. La vie. He thinks we're in the same boat. I could kill him. Not even a place to sit down. How can I stand here and not look like a woman waiting for a man? Uh, maybe he's in the other lobby. No. No, he distinctly said the gold room, five o'clock. Five o'clock? But it's 5.30 now. Maybe he got tired of waiting and went away. Maybe he never came at all. Marcy Thorne stood up by a man. Oh, how Lydia would laugh at that. It's absurd. A man who's gone to the trouble of sending white violet to a woman in the morning would hardly be likely to stand her up in the afternoon. Oh. I know that look. I've used it myself so often on other women. I must get away from this place. Even if he finds me now, it wouldn't do any good. The moon's gone. I'm going home. Lulu, where's Robbie? I don't know. I haven't seen him. He hasn't been in since he left this morning, but he'll be here in a minute, though. He knows I'm baking his favorite cookies today, and he'll come around begging for some before Lulu, dinner. Lulu, you mean he hasn't come home from school at all? No, ma'am, but what's the matter? Don't you feel well? Yes, yes, I feel fine. I, uh... I just think I'll go out and look for him. Now, Mrs. Thorne, you're not going to start fretting about Robbie at this age, are you? The boy can take care of himself just fine. Well, I know he can, Lulu. I know that. But it's after six o'clock and it's getting chilly outside. And I want him home. Uh, now, Mrs. Thorne, please. Never mind, Lulu. Just want Robbie home and I want him home right now. <laughs> What's the matter with me? This afternoon when I left Robbie, he looked hurt and alone, and it's bothering me. Here, I let him go home alone so I could keep a date with a man. A man who didn't even show up. Now, there's absolutely nothing to be jittery about. Nothing. Where is he? Maybe he's over by the swings. There's some boys. Please, let one of them be Robbie. Hello? 
Tell me, uh, do any of you know Robbie Thorne? Sure. Well, have you seen him around here this afternoon? No. You're sure? I don't know. Maybe I saw him. Here, on the playground? I don't know. They're digging a new sewer line down the street. Some of the kids went there. Oh, I see. Thanks. I don't even know where my child plays after school. He's at the excavation, just like the boy said. But it's getting dark. The men don't work this late. I'll go home. That's what I'll do. Surely he's there by now, listening to the radio, eating the loose cookies. No, I'm afraid to go home. I'm afraid. What if he isn't there? No. No, I'll go on to the excavation. Sorry. They're both too big. No, no, I'm not going to let myself think these things. Oh, the policeman. Maybe I ought to stop him, but... Well, what would I say? I want to report a missing child? No. No, I can't do that, because... Well, when you say things, sometimes it makes them happen. Robbie? Had been, I'd have known it by now. His name and address are in his clothes. Could be hurt. And if he is, it's my fault. It's my fault. <gasps> what was it Lydia said to me today? People who try to have everything often end up with nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. I can't bear this. I've got to know. Anything's better than not knowing. I've got to go home. I've got to find out. It's so quiet in here. If we were home, surely I'd hear him. Something has happened to him. I know. Justin. Justin will help me. Justin. Justin. Uh-oh. I didn't see that bishop. I'm going to lose my queen. Well, you can take it back if you want, Dad. I can't do that. One very important thing in chess, Robbie. Never take back a move, no matter what the consequence. Well, hello, darling. Oh, dear. Oh, Martha, what's the matter? You look like a ghost. Oh, Nothing, really. It, it, it's cold outside, and I've been running, and I... I have this crazy idea that Robbie was lost. What? Lost? <laughs> crazy idea's right. Oh, baby, you nearly frightened me to death. I've been running all over the neighborhood looking for you. Where were you? At Albert. Albert. <laughs> I never even thought of Albert. Why didn't you leave word where you were? Well, Albert's got a new puppet theater, and... They were putting on a show. Oh, but you could have phoned Lulu. You know you're always supposed to be home before 6 o'clock. Well, I forgot about the time, and they were letting me help them. Oh, it really wasn't very late. Uh, who's they? Has Albert got a brother? No, it was his mother. You see, you ought to see her with those strings. She's keen. You move that. Keen? Albert's mother. That pudgy woman, he thinks she's keen. Only <laughs> this afternoon, I was feeling sorry for her. I was laughing at her. I, I, I think I'll go up and change. All right, dear. Robbie, I'm going to call up right now and order those theater tickets for Saturday. And you decide where you'd like to have lunch, all right? 
I can't, Mom, this Saturday. I promised Albert I'd have lunch over there. We're going to do another puppet show. With his mother? I suppose so. She's almost always home. And I'm not. That's what he means. No, he doesn't. He didn't mean anything by it. He's simply rejecting me now for the very same reason I rejected him this afternoon. There's something else he'd rather do. Somebody else he'd rather be with. Lydia's right, I've lost him. I've lost him to Justin, who gives him companionship. Lost him to Lulu, who bakes his favorite cookies. Lost him to Albert's mother, who's almost always home. Maybe if I try very hard, maybe I can win him back. Oh, it'll take time, of course, and devotion. Doing the things that he wants to do. Really being a mother, not just playing a pretty little game about it. Yes? I was wondering if you were about ready for dinner, Mrs. Thorne. Yes, I'm almost ready, Lily. And here's a message for you. I left it in the hall, but I guess you didn't see it when you came in. Mr. Delaney? Yes, that's the name. A very nice-spoken gentleman. He was called to Philadelphia this afternoon, he said. And he said, be sure to tell you that it was sudden and that he was very sorry. What time did he call, Lulu? Oh, about 2.30 or 3 o'clock, something like that. I'll be right in five minutes. Yes, I'll be right down. If I'd walked home with Robbie when he asked me to this afternoon, I'd have found this message and... and I'd have been spared all this agony. But should I have been spared? No. No, it's better this way. I learned the hard way. I'll tell Lulu when Mr. Delaney calls again. I'm out. You two men think you can pull yourselves away from this game long enough to eat? But if you insist, this fellow has me just about licked anyway. Well, one more minute, Mom. Okay, son. Never let it be said we made a lady wait. Oh, Marcia, what are you smiling about? What's funny? <laughs> it's a long story, darling. But it is funny. The joke's on me. Someday when I'm very, very old, I'll tell you all about it, all right? You look pretty, Mom. Oh, thank you, dear. Well, I'd like to second that compliment. Well, considering the source, it's the nicest compliment I've ever had. Shall we eat? Thanks. It is very old-fashioned indeed. It goes way back to 400 B.C. Listen. Children are the anchors that hold a mother to life. Oh, good night. See you next week.